Thank you all for joining us tonight at the University of Washington Electrical Engineering Class of 2018 graduation. Please take a moment to ensure your cell phones are set to silent. We now ask that the audience please rise for the procession of our EE faculty, graduation speaker, special guests, and graduates to enter the arena.
Please be seated. This is a wonderful evening, and we welcome all of you. Welcome to graduates, family, friends, alumni, and faculty to our annual electrical engineering graduation ceremony. We are delighted to have all of you here tonight. We gather here together to honor our graduating students who have worked hard during their time here at UW Electrical Engineering Department. Graduating from UW Department of Electrical Engineering is not an easy task. You can ask any one of our students. But they also must be very proud of their accomplishments. It has been a pleasure for our faculty to work with each and every one of the students. The enthusiasm, energy, intelligence, and creativity of our graduating students is unparalleled. I'm particularly fortunate to be in the company of such an exceptional group of colleagues. I'm also fortunate to be part of a department with such a successful group of alumni who have gone on to remarkable careers and achievements in their lives. Our UW E graduates today are poised to continue that legacy. As I look across the room tonight, I see a generation of brilliant minds, next generation of leaders who are ready to spread their wings and make their mark on our society. We have provided you with a diverse set of tools to succeed in your careers. Our alumni confirm an electrical engineering degree is one of the best possible preparations for a high-tech career, allowing our students to choose almost any career path that demands technical innovation and leadership. You have graduated from a first-class electrical engineering program at a top-ranked university with a degree in one of the highest demand career fields. You have gained valuable research and internship experiences that will lead to graduate school, rewarding positions in industry or in research institutions you will continue to grow as leaders in our society. These are all outstanding accomplishments, but there is more to come. At UWEE, our faculty and students are addressing problems that have highest societal impact. We hope that in all your future endeavors, you will keep the societal impact at the core. Entrepreneurship and innovation is an intrinsic trait of the department. It is evident in our collaborative faculty and students' projects. In its third year, the engine or the engineering entrepreneurial capstone program now has about 100 students graduating through that program. The program is also now going through review so that in the fall of 2019, it may become a certificate program itself. In fact, UWE is currently ranked as number one department in entrepreneurial engineering efforts here at UW with more startups since 2010. Examples of new startups this year are One Radio Corporation with John Saar as the founder, True Wave with Matt Reynolds as a founder, Tune Optics with Professors Arka Mazumdar and Carl Boringer as founders. There are others in the works. Students' awards, I'm going to select a subset and point out some of them. Excellence in research continues to be at the highest level at all areas of the department. Amazon recently put out a challenge to universities across the world to create a social board that can converse coherently and engagingly with humans on a range of topics. I'm definitely sure that I cannot do that with a stranger for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. But our students can definitely do that. So our team, led by Professor Mario Ostendorf, won the 
first prize competing against the universities from more than 15 countries in the world. The student Hao Fan, who led the project, also won the 2018 College of Engineering Outstanding Graduate Student Award. Our alumni, Wamsitala, who graduated and also is a founder of a company, won at the same time the ACM SIGCOM Dissertation Award for the PhD work, and also the ACM SIGMOBIL Dissertation Award for his PhD work. Our PhD student, Eldridge Alcantara, won the 2018 Distinguished Teaching Award from the university. Tong Zhang received the 2017 University of Washington Distinguished Dissertation Award. Our undergraduate student, Vijay Singh, was named the IEEE Power and Energy Scholar. If there are members of the Alexa group who are here, please stand up. Hao Fan was one of the members. So it's clear that the students are not yet graduating, but they have been part of the program and leading the work. Great. Thank you. Our faculty awards. Our faculty continue to be recognized for their accomplishments. Professor Arka Mazumdar received the 2018 Sloan Fellowship for his creative research in the field of photonics. Eight of our faculty members were awarded the Amazon Catalyst Fellowship, a program that requires fellows to find bold solution to world problems. The list includes Les Atlas, Carl Boringer, Howard Chisek, Blake Hannaford, Eric Clavins, Arka Mazumdar, Shwedek Patil, and Josh Smith. In addition, I think Rahil might have uh, been a recipient as well. If that is correct, please stand up. <laughs> Professor Mario Ostendorf was selected to be the 2018 IEEE James Flanagan Speech and Audio Processing Award winner or recipient. Professor Ostendorf received the award in recognition for contributions to statistical and computational models for analysis, interpretation, and synthesis in speech and language processing. Uh, Mari. <laughs> that award is not a society level award. It's an IEEE level award. So competition is very different. Congratulations. Professor Eve Riskin was honored with the 2018 Electrical and Computer Engineering Department Heads Association Diversity Award for her trailblazing work in the field of diversity and access. Professor Riskin leads a number of high-profile programs in this area at the national level. <laughs> Professors Shwedek Patil and Matt Reynolds received the Association for Computing Machinery Ubicom Tenure Impact Award. I think at least Shwetek is there with his. <laughs> Assistant Professor Baozheng Zhang received Keith and Nancy Rati Endowed Career Development Professorship in Power and Energy. Professor Josh Smith received the Milton and Delia Suchel Professorship in Entrepreneurial Excellence. <laughs> Josh Smith is also advisor to a number of students, including Wamsi, who received many awards and also went on to found companies. Now I want to talk about a few of the new faculty who are joining. From alumni to our students to our faculty, we continue to innovate and expand in new frontiers. One such frontier is the neuroengineering and the development of rehabilitation devices for spinal cord injury. The department will be welcoming three faculty in the fall of 2018, with two of them in this area. First, Dr. Amy Osborne joins us from NYU with a focus on the brain-machine interfaces to restore motor functions 
to persons with moderate disabilities. The next one is Chet Moritz, a pioneer in rehabilitation technologies for spinal cord injuries, will join EE department as a major department with a joint appointment with the rehabilitation medicines. Third is Professor Molly, who will be joining us from University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. Mo is an expert in the field of integrated nanophotonics, photonics, and optomechanics. I want to switch gears to acknowledge uh, uh, one of the members of the staff. I would like to take this moment to recognize and thank our E staff member, Pam Eisenheim, who is somewhere here. After 34 years of devoted service to the EE department in various roles, from program manager to EE events manager, Pam Eisenheim will be retiring in September 2018. Pam's commitment and loyalty to the EE has been unwavering, and her passion to support our students and faculty over three decades have left or going to be leaving a lasting legacy. Her great humor, delightful stories, and laughter have made many working with her feeling that she will be deeply missed. Let's thank her by giving her a round of applause. Now, many of you know Pam, and you're going to wonder what she was going to do, and I was going to write it, and then chose not to. Uh, she's going to think what and how she's going to help the department after she retires. <laughs> because she's going to miss us. Now, I'd like to introduce our, one of our uh, guests. We have a special guest joining us who represents the spirit of entrepreneurial excellence. And he's a husky. In 2009, he was named one of the top 25 innovators and entrepreneurs by Seattle Business Magazine. We are excited to hear from the chair of the UW Board of Regents, Jeremy Jake, who was appointed to his position by Governor Christine Gregoire in 2012. Jeremy is a UW alumni and has led multiple software innovations to the market. This includes Aldus, which was acquired by Adobe, and Visio, which was acquired by Microsoft. Recently, he served as CEO of Snoopy, a company that was started by Shwetek Patil, which uses technology from Shwetek's lab and, uh, to deliver sensor and web services to home hazards, conditions, and threats. But that's not why Jeremy is here today. What brings him here today is what is most important to him, which is his family. His nephew, Aaron Jake, is graduating with a PhD from EE today. So we are very proud of multiple generations of uh, EE connection to the UW in all possible forms. I'm very pleased to welcome chair of our region, Jeremy Jake, to share his perspective on UW with you today. Well, first of all, I want to thank Rada and the, and the faculty here for letting me crash this event and uh, have, a, have a role in it. And, and I, I think probably the first thing to say is, is, is to answer a question that's probably on a lot of minds here, and that is, what the heck is a regent? And uh, why are you here? So the regents are 10 people that are appointed by the governor to serve six-year terms. who are responsible for the, the uh, health and well-being of the university, and we're responsible to the people of the state of Washington. <clears throat> it's like a board of directors for a corporation. Um, we hire and fire the president, we approve budgets, and, and appropriate to today's ceremony, we actually grant the degrees. So my connection to UW, I am a double, double dog. I started here in uh, 1973 and got a math degree and then got a computer science master's degree in 1980, which was a great time to get a computer science degree because there weren't very many of them at the time, which allowed me to go on and do several companies knowing that I could always get a job if they failed. It's important. Um, I've hired a lot of people from UW, 
um, use faculty for research, uh, con under research contracts, and uh, the UW has been an important part of my life uh, for many years, and I'm very proud to be, be appointed a regent in 2012. So, Rada talked a little bit about my connection to this department. Um, I know how hard it is to get a PhD, and I, when I think about my nephew, Aaron, who's getting his today, I remember back, I don't know, must be 12, 12 or more years ago when he came up uh, and stayed with my wife and I and interned at a company that I was doing at the time. And it's been a long road since then. Come a long way, Aaron, and I'm very proud of you. Um, also, as Rada mentioned, I did a startup with Matt Reynolds and Shwedek Patel, two faculty members here. We, this, I think what we did with Snoopy Technologies is an is a important aspect of what happens here at this department. Uh, commercialization of technology is a big part of what this department does, and uh, I, I think that's really important. Uh, what we care about is that, that our graduates have impact on the world, and commercialization of technology is one of the ways in which we get that impact. The other way is by training people who go out into industry and are essentially vectors for the good ideas, the research, the, the technology that gets developed inside of university and bring it into the commercial realm. Um, I know a lot of people here have already impacted um, the world in some way, but even if you feel you haven't, take a minute and think about the impact that you've had on your family, on the next generation of your family. Look around this room and you can see the impact you've had just by getting to this point. And there's, there's much more to come. And this is a great place to exercise what you learned here at the W department. Seattle is a vibrant community for technology. It's one of the fastest growing cities, got a great tech um, economy. And, and you just really couldn't find a better place to, to start a company or, or to go to work for a company than the Seattle area. I'm gonna give you one piece of advice. <clears throat> it's, um, it's a quote that I often tell people because I think it's really an important piece of advice. It's probably the only quote that's ever been attributed to Calvin Coolidge, who many of you may know was an early president. Here's what he said, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. So if I can leave you with one thought tonight, it's the importance of persistence in achieving your goals. Never get up, press on, and you'll be successful. So congratulations to all of you from me and on behalf of the Board of Regents. We can't wait to see what you do next, and we have high expectations. Thank you very much. So thank you. Jeremy, for sh being here with us and also sharing your thoughts. And thank you for being great partners of my faculty and students throughout as they start the companies and have the conversation. Very important to us. Tonight, I'm pleased to introduce our graduation speaker, UWE alumni, Sal Denani, as our 2018 graduation speaker. He received his B.S. degree in our department in 1996 and has since established himself as a leader in the telecommunication industry. He is a co-founder of Telenev, a company that pioneered GPS navigation for mobile phones and changed the way people get from point A to point B. Sal brings years of experience in product marketing, product management, business strategy and operation. Prior to Telenev, Sal worked with Machina Group, a leading strategy consulting firm, where he developed market entry, product launch, and expansion strategies for 
various startups, telecom companies, and telecom infrastructure providers. Before joining Magna Group, Sal was responsible for product development and management at Slumberjay Limited, Test and Transaction Group. In addition to his UW education, Sal also completed coursework through Stanford University's Industrial Engineering and Engineering Management Program. I also want to take this time to thank Sal's family, extended family, who were there last evening and also today here listening to, in fact, uh, many of them are Huskies. In fact, uh, quite a few of them are Huskies, 99% are Huskies, and maybe the next 100% uh, of the next generation will be Huskies too. So with uh, this, please help me welcome our very own and inspiring alumni and leader, Sal Dinani. Chairman Pavandran, distinguished members of the faculty and staff, honored guests, and most importantly, the graduates, thank you for a warm welcome. This is surreal to be here 22 years later. I would not have imagined this. And it's, it's super exciting for me, and it's very humbling for me to be here on this very special day. Uh, to the graduates, I remember those days. Uh, each of you have persevered, have made personal sacrifices, have endured hardships to get to this point. And it's not easy, and it's truly a great accomplishment. And it's also not easy for the families. They've supported you, they've paid the tuition and the bills, and gotten you this far. So let's take a moment uh, to congratulate everybody here, the graduates and their families, on this tremendous uh, accomplishment. I've had the privilege of attending UWE, obviously, and also Stanford Computer Science. And one thing that struck me uh, when I was attending Stanford was that the caliber of people that we have here, the rigor, the intensity that we have here, is no less than Stanford. You are graduating from a world-class institution, and what that means is that each of you individually is world-class. I thought long and hard about what I should say today uh, that would help you at the start of this new journey that you're starting. I thought about what would interest you, what would make a meaningful impact to your life. And if I were to look back, knowing what I know now, what would I have wanted to hear if I was sitting right there? And after thinking about it for a while, uh, trying out different ideas in my head, um, the, the answer came to me. And it was that if I was in your shoes, I'd want to know what I should do in the near future to set myself up for a fantastic career and a fantastic life. So I've got a three-point plan for you guys. Another thing that surfaced as I was thinking about the next three to five years was that if I look back 22 years after, you know, after graduating, the first five years of my life, of my career, were the most critical. I grew the most, I progressed my career the most, uh, and most importantly, uh, I feel I made the biggest impact to society that I have so far. I'll give you more details on that later. And, and that insight then lead me to do, led me to do some, some, good, uh, some quick uh, research and uh, look into the lives of the most impactful people um, that have been here. So the first person, as soon as you think about somebody that's impactful, is Einstein. So I looked his history up. Uh, he graduated in 1900. And um, if you look at his accomplishments, one of his greatest accomplishments were, was the special theory of relativity. And um, if you guys were to venture to guess when he came up with that, it was just within five years of graduation. So 1905 is when he came up with his special theory of relativity, just five years into it. And if you, if you look at some other greats, Steve Jobs founded Apple within five years of dropping out of school. <laughs> Bill Gates, same thing. Elon Musk, not same thing, he didn't, he didn't drop out, I think he graduated. Um, Elon Musk, same thing, 
first five years, um, PayPal. Larry Page, first five years. And so there are many examples. I just did some you know, 15 minutes of Googling there. Uh, and then I, I talked to some of my friends and I said, hey, this, I have this insight, what do you guys think? And they also said the same thing. Like, yes, the first five years were the most critical. And if you just look at all these people and what they've done, it was just within five years again uh, of where you are right now. So the question is, why, why are these five years so special? And I, I thought about that some and, and you know, there are three things that came to mind. Uh, that I boiled it down to. Number one is that you're free to take risks. You're smart, the job market is hot, the world is your oyster. You can do anything you want. You can start a company, or you could go work at Amazon, or Google, or Microsoft, NVIDIA, my company, Telenav, we're hiring. <laughs> and if that doesn't work out, you could always try something else. There is, there is just so much opportunity. It's no big deal. You can just pick back up, move fast, break some more things, do it again. There's very little downside to where you are right now. Number two, and you realize that after 20 years, is that your brain is at its peak right now. You've been working through tough problems every single day. I remember, you know, just grueling through those. And you have to wrestle with new concepts that you just don't know. And you're constantly learning new things. So your brain is tuned to learn and grow. It's a very special time, and it's a great state to be in. So that's something you can take advantage of by just doing a lot in a short amount of time. Number three is, you'll realize this too, is you guys are superhuman. You don't need sleep. You can keep going and going and going, like the Energizer Bunny. And you can do two, maybe three days of work in just one day. That doesn't last very long, so take advantage of that time. <laughs> you can push yourself much harder now than you ever will in the future. And if you just give yourself a fixed time frame, let's say a year, you can do more this next year than, you, than say, 10 years later through 10th through 11th year. So this is the time. So now the question is, okay, fine, we know it's a, it's a good time, what should we do? Have a, three steps there too. It's nice how life just packs itself in threes. So number one, and the number one thing I'm gonna mention will sound like, you know, it's very common sense advice. You've heard it many times, but I'm sure you've heard the saying, common sense is not very common. And it's so very true in this case. So the first thing, the first advice I have for you is to work extremely, extremely hard. You, again, you have the energy, you have the brain power, you have the time. Work extremely, extremely hard. Because whatever you do now in the next five years or so, is going, to be, is going to give you an immense boost. It's like that big rocket booster that's there in the center. The other rockets are fine around, but it's the center one that matters. And that, that's the next five years. And it's going to set the tone for the rest of your life. When I graduated, I was regularly putting in 18-hour days. I'd wake up at 7 or 8 a.m., go to work, do my job, regular work till about 10, 11. Then I'd pick up a programming book till 2 or 3 a.m., learn something new, go home, sleep, repeat. And that lasted for some time. Six months into my first job, I asked my manager, hey, I want, I'm kind of bored, I want to do my master's. He said, sure, and they paid for it. And um, I started working in computer science, in my master's in computer science in parallel. I had same thing, I'd get done with work at 11, go to Sweet Hall, which is the computer lab on Stanford campus, code till 2 or 3 a.m., typically fall asleep right there, on the keyboard, wake up with the keyboard imprinted on my face, and in pain. And I, I can still feel that and remember that. It was worth it. So hard work, number one. Number two is to have a goal. And that doesn't mean exactly in year one I'm gonna do this. It doesn't have to be precise or two or three. But it has to be something that you're shooting for. You aim at it, you, you have direction, and then you just move towards that. It has to be something that, that gets you fired up, that, that's, that gets you excited about, uh, excited. And then you need a loose plan to just move towards that. Uh, what I did, what I think works is a one-year plan, just kind of, okay, I'm gonna try to do this, and, and then you can measure yourself against it. You, you, you can't improve what you can't measure, so it's very important to set that, that goal out there. And, and you will move towards it, and you will zigzag, you'll go off on tangents, you'll discover something interesting and new, 
Um, and you know, you'll realize five years later, you landed somewhere close and you did something amazing. I zigzagged a lot. I had a plan after graduating. I was gonna work for two to three years. I was gonna get a master's degree from one of the uh, top schools. I was gonna find some other uh, partners at the school to start my company with. Uh, then we'd work on a cool idea and start the company. It didn't work like that at all. Not even, not even close. I was too impatient. I got bored two years into my job. I didn't finish my master's. It was just taking too long. Um, and you know, in Silicon Valley at that time, in 99 or so, you had to have some credibility, 98, 99, to, to get some VC money. So I decided to join a consulting uh, firm called the Regis McKenna Group, which was named after its founder. And he was the guy who was a coach to Steve Jobs, Andy Grove, and, and really uh, taught, sort of set the tone for marketing in, in high tech. And I was having a blast there. It was a bunch of you know, 20 some year olds, all graduated from top schools. We'd get to work on really fun projects. It was a lot of fun, but I had my sights on starting a company. I'd wanted to do that uh, for a long time, since I was 13, 14. And so I quit the job, and, and just 11 months in, my manager was shocked because I was leaving $40,000 as a bonus. I would, if I would have waited two weeks, I would have gotten that. But I, we were getting VC money, we had to close, I had to leave. And so I, lost, I, I left that $40,000 bonus and quit and started Telenav uh, with my three partners. And that was in 99, that was three years after I was in that chair. And I'm, I'm just, I didn't have a high GPA. Um, I didn't do anything really amazing in school. Um, just an average guy, but just very passionate, uh, persistent, hardworking, and just had a target and I kept moving and caught many lucky breaks. So back to the three points. First, word, first was hard work. Second was having a direction and a goal and zigzagging to it. And, and the third one, which I think is uh, perhaps the most important, but right up there in the top three is um, surround yourself with good, big-hearted, passionate people that will inspire you, that will complement you, people that challenge your thinking. They will be the professors of your life, so you can have that same thing going with you. And they'll allow you to keep learning and stay inspired. I've been incredibly lucky in this area, and I'll, I'll share two short stories of great people that I've had in my life. So the first story is about my best friend, my soulmate, my very, very much better half, my wife, Amina, who's right there. I won't ask her to stand up and embarrass herself. <laughs> She's always been my rock. Um, always there to support me no matter what I needed. And I can say without a doubt that without her support, I, I couldn't have done any of the things that I, I, I was able to do. We have two beautiful, wonderful, very funny children, Sophia and Zane, that are sitting next to, next to her. We'll get them to stand up. <laughs> no. They were born one year apart. And um, if you can imagine two little kids, you know, a newborn and a one-year-old, I'm sure the audience kind of could relate to that a little bit. Uh, so this, we, had, we had two little kids. We had just started Telenav, and um, I was all over the place. Uh, we had moved back here. The company was in Silicon Valley. And so I would travel back and forth uh, to the Valley. We had customers all over the country uh, that we were starting to, and I was traveling uh, a lot. And that whole time, Amina was stuck with the two kids, 24 hours a day, many times five days of the week. If, if anybody's done even one hour of babysitting, you know what that, that can be like. She also gave up a job that she loved. She didn't complain, um, and she just said to me, do whatever it takes to make your dreams happen, and supported me. She's always been there when it comes to a business problem, any kind of problem, helped me think through things, pushing me to rise higher. Thank you, my love, for everything. <laughs> I believe everybody needs somebody like Amina in their life. Uh, you need a strong partner to help you. So that's, that's key, you need good people. Number two, uh, the second story is about my partners at Telenav. 
there were four of us that started Telenav. Uh, three were PhDs, not me, I dropped out. Um, two had their PhDs from Stanford. And the third guy, his name is Bob Renard, he is one of the guys that designed the GPS system that's up there today. All these guys are literally rocket scientists, highly accomplished. So we started our company in 99. Soon thereafter, the dot-com bubble burst. We ran out of money. We couldn't pay our employees. We could not pay office rent. Um, we negotiated with the landlord. He said, you guys can stay in. Nobody's paying rent anyway. If somebody comes in, I'll kick you out. We didn't get kicked out for quite a few years. But we didn't, have, we didn't have money to even hire a janitorial service. And so we would take turns cleaning the bathrooms and the office. And it was the founder's job. And Bob would be the guy who would say, no, I'll do it this time, no problem. And here's this guy who built the GPS system that's up there still today, and he's cleaning bathrooms. That, that, that's the kind of big-hearted person that you need in your life to be successful, very important. So let's recap all that I shared. Number one, you're in your prime. You have everything needed in you. You can accomplish whatever you want. You can grow exponentially by taking risks. And you have very little downside. Second, you need to set your sights very high. Imagine where you want to be in five years and move in that direction. Third, you need to get going on it now. You need to have a short-term plan, get moving towards your goal, zigzag through and don't worry about changing direction. Try something new. Just keep moving forward. And fourth, give it your all. Shake up the world. You will disrupt. You will create something new, something radically different, and, as, and, and make your own dent in the universe, as Steve Jobs would say. So I'll leave you with one last thing for this. You guys need to close your eyes. Seriously, close your eyes. Imagine yourself five years from now. It's June 6th, 2023. You're in that moment where you've made the dent in the universe. Where are you? What's around you? Perhaps you're at a conference where you just finished presenting a breakthrough paper to a standing ovation. Or perhaps you're at the NASDAQ ringing the bell as your company goes public. Or maybe you're in your, in your lab at 4 a.m. and you've solved a really hard problem that will significantly, positively change the trajectory of humanity. Take a moment and just imagine that. See yourself in that moment. Now open your eyes. Take out your phones. Take out your phones. No, just, you don't have to take out your phones. And, and just remember to write a five-year plan today. Because today it starts. Today is your new journey. It begins right now. And, and I'll conclude by saying um, a very famous saying, which is carpe diem, seize the day, make it happen today. Thank you for your time. Go dogs. So thank you very much, Sal, for sharing your thoughts. And on behalf of the faculty, uh, students, and the uh, staff, I'd like to present you with a small token of our appreciation. <laughs> So you can close your eyes, think about in five years where you will be. It's very clear, right? Capstone Fair. <laughs> you are going to be leading the project, so you're looking at every student leading new startups and all kinds of things with Jeremy and Shwetek and everyone leading the way. Thank you. Thank you, Sal, for sharing your thoughts. Now I would like to take some time to reflect back all the way to 1968. I'm pleased to recognize alumni here with us tonight who are part of the UW-E class of 1968. 
This is a way of celebrating their 50 year graduation reunion. So we had a small reception there and one of them pointed out uh, the one factor that is consistent. He said he doesn't remember all the details but he remember one thing, the homeworks and the exams were very hard and he probably still remembers the answers to the ones which he didn't finish. So that probably goes back to many of us too. So please stand up uh, uh, when your names are called. Uh, which side are the, oh yes, there you are. Ward Helms. He graduated with a PhD and then joined Faculty of Electrical Engineering Department. He taught electronics for 38 years and carried out research on ionospheric radio wave propagation and analog integrated circuits. Ward is presently retired to the shores of Camino Islands and is very active amateur radio with emphasis on linear satellites. Uh, in our, uh, one of the gatherings he pointed out, Irene Piran was uh, one of his mentors. Tom Jones completed his bachelor's degree And after graduating, he worked as a professional engineer in power field for four, over 45 years. During his tenure, he had the opportunity to see many parts of the US and the world, which included 10 years overseas. The next is John Lynn. My memory is short. It's probably John who mentioned about the exams. I may be wrong. <laughs> John graduated with his bachelor's and then attended graduate school at Stanford University where he studied computer architecture. After receiving his PhD in 1973, he joined Texas Instruments in Dallas, Texas and contributed to or managed numerous R&D organizations throughout the company. At retirement in 2006, he was the director of systems and software in semiconductor R&D. The next is Jack McNeese. Jack completed his bachelor's degree and then only worked for two years as an EE, converting over to computer process control for 20 years. Following his MSCS, he eventually did a, B, A, P programming in SAP environment. Married for 56 years, he and his wife Penny enjoy four children, 11 grandchildren, and traveling. <laughs> Next is Jack Miller. Jack graduated with his bachelor's degree and had a 33-year career at the University of Washington Applied Physics Laboratory where he developed instruments for oceanographic research and was co-principal investigator on cruises on oceans and around the world. <laughs> Next is Tom Scarhog. completed his bachelor's degree and used the fundamentals of his engineering background every day, which included practicing dentistry for 42 years. Most recently, he has been authoring books of personal empowerment. The latest book is about preventing cancer and heart disease with empowered state of mind. The next is James Wilson. James graduated with his bachelor's degree and then went on to work for IBM designing automated test equipment. After 30 years, he retired, worked independently for two years, and then went back to IBM for another 7.5 years. He's now retired and enjoying his children, grandchildren, and traveling. <laughs> so 
So maybe please, uh, all of you stand up with your spouses or partners who have accompanied you uh, today. Thank you for being pioneers and role models for our future generation of Huskies. It's a great privilege to have you here uh, to inspire the graduating class. Now we move on to the introduction of the uh, graduation event. Uh, so as we move to the presentation, there are a few things I want to share with you. Please uh, make a note of it. As we recognize each student tonight, we ask the families and friends of graduates to remain in your seats with your camera. There will be opportunities in the foyer for photos after the program. And for graduates, when you shake my hands and also the hands of the graduation speaker, please stand by your mark. There is a mark for you. Uh, smile and look at the photographer because many of you later regret that you don't have your photos. So we have a plan this time. I personally made sure the marks are at the right spot. Hopefully the photographer will be at the right spot too. So. We understand the enthusiasm and the excellent excitement uh, that surrounds this event and thank you for your cooperation. So now I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Eve Riskin, UW College of Engineering Associate Dean of Diversity and Access, who together with the with Dr. Bruce Darling, Professor of Electrical Engineering, will announce the names of our graduates. <laughs> Dr. Blake Hannaford, Graduate Program Coordinator, will now say a few words before the conferral of doctoral degrees. Thanks very much. Thanks all of you for coming and uh, congratulations to the graduates. Uh, tonight we're honoring our PhD graduates first uh, who will receive what we call the Doctor of Philosophy in Electrical Engineering. It, the Doctor of Philosophy is the highest degree granted by our department and the highest degree recognized by the whole profession of electrical engineering. So that's a lot to be proud of right there. Uh, from the outside, uh, it might seem like electrical engineering is one thing, but as our PhD graduates will tell you, uh, what they do is they take a really deep dive to become true experts in one of our many specialty areas. So you're gonna see uh, people getting recognized for their achievement in all kinds of areas, electric power systems that keep the lights on, signal processing and communication systems that recognize your voice in the Alexa device and others, uh, radio waves and antennas to keep your cell phones talking, uh, electronic devices, and my, one of my personal favorites is low power chip design, because I don't want to keep charging my cell phone all the time. Uh, robotics, even uh, engineered biological systems at the molecular level. So the PhD doesn't just confirm a mastery of the specialty area, but it also demonstrates that each of these candidates has uh, defined and completed novel independent research. They've created new knowledge, new scientific knowledge, new engineering insights, or better science and engineering techniques. And at the heart of EE, as you've heard already, is innovation. So for some of these PhD students, it's meant like finding new ways of solving old problems or pushing the state of an existing art. Uh, others have developed new technology that boosts all kinds of applications. And still others maybe introduce just a new research area entirely or a new theoretical breakthrough that might take years to uh, uh, reach practical application. So EE graduates, EE PhD graduates have a creative vision and they boldly question, they persist 
We heard about persistence already in their experimentation and work because really they have a deep down belief that there's a better, better world out there that's waiting to be discovered, so let's get busy and discover it. Um, you graduates, you couldn't have achieved this degree without being exceptional students and just really smart people, but also you're, you've shown resilience. You've undoubtedly had setbacks and difficulties and you've overcome them getting here. And it's that resilience and persistence, it's a long slog uh, to get through all our hurdles and get the degree. So trying and failing is a good thing. It builds that resilience. And as you leave and enter the next stage of your, your career and you start checking boxes on that five-year plan that you just jotted down into your cell phones, um, experiment, take risks, don't fear failure. Uh, both your successes and your failures lead you to great discoveries and, and impact on the world. So we're now going to announce and start actually giving out degrees. We're going to announce the 2018 PhDs in Electrical Engineering. Shi Hung Ying, um, his PhD advisors are Sumit Roy and Professor Puvindran. He will be headed by Professor Puvindran. Our next graduate is Pan Li, and she will be hooded by her advisor, Professor Baosan Zhang. Our next PhD is Bolan Xu. Um, his advisor is Daniel Kirshen and Baosan Zhang. Um, and a friend. They will be headed by both Professors Kirshen and Zang. That was likely our youngest PhD tonight. Our next graduate is Aaron Parks, and he will be hooded by his PhD advisor, Professor Joshua Smith. Our next PhD is Vashnavi Natarenganathan. Um, her advisor is Professor Joshua Smith, who will head her. Our next graduate is Aaron Jake and he will be hooded by his PhD advisor, Professor Mari Ostendorf. Our next PhD is Reza Egbali. His advisor is Mariam Fazel. Tonight, Professor Jeffrey Bilms will do the hooding. Okay. 
Our next graduate is Charles Delahunt, and he will be hooded by his PhD advisor, uh, Eve Riskin, uh, and he's also co-advised by Professor Nathan Kuntz. Our next PhD is Raheel Jain. His advisors are Professors Bruce Darling and Barry Lutz from Bioengineering, and they will jointly head him. Our next PhD is Salman Nadiri Parazi. His advisor is also Professor Joshua Smith, who will do the heading. Our next graduate is John Sip Park, and he will be hooded by his PhD advisor, Professor Jingneng Huang. Our next PhD is Jesus Contreras Ocaña. His advisors are Professors Miguel Ortega Vazquez and Baozin Zhang. He will be headed by Dr. Zhang. Our next graduate is Scott Wisdom, and he will be hooded by his PhD advisor, Professor Les Atlas. Our next PhD is Andrew Haddock. He will be hooded by his advisor, Professor Howard Chizik. Our next PhD graduate is Sumit Mukherjee, and he will be hooded by his PhD advisor, George Selick, and he was also advised with uh, Sriram Kanan. Our next PhD is Mayori Salvarasa Jaiswal. Her PhD advisor is Professor Ming Ting Sun. She will be hooded tonight by Professor Puvindran.
Our next graduate is Elliot Saba, and he will be hooded by his PhD advisor, Professor Shwedek Patel. And our final PhD is Ethan Keeler, who will be hooded by his advisor, Professor Lee Lin. Now, Dr. Josh Smith, the Milton and Delia Suchel Professor in Entrepreneurial Excellence, and our Professional Master's Program Coordinator will say a few words before the presentation of our Master's of Science graduates. Thank you. So the master's degree historically was a distinct degree that was often offered in course to bachelor's graduates who had maintained a respectable lifestyle, such as uh, staying out of jail. Um, <laughs> so um, tonight's master's degrees are uh, in no way pro forma. Uh, all of our master's students have worked extremely hard, uh, sacrificed through financially uh, with their families, many of whom are here, uh, to, to earn uh, their degrees. So it is through hard work and perseverance that you achieved your degree tonight. My unsolicited advice to you is not to ask yourself what's next, <clears throat> but to stay out of jail. <laughs> So we will now award the 2018 candidates to the MSEE degree. Alan Trin. Jeffrey Thomas. David Aragon. Catherine Feng. Mei-Ling Wu. Umaya Khan. Nicholas Robillard. Matt Jones. Ronald Dubra. Dubra. 
Jiefeng Liang. Sean Baker. Derek Shen. Rohit Dougal. Srini C. Shantanu Thakurdase. Naveen John. Lev Korolenko. Nam Song. Eleanor Bosch. James Goyne. Lincoln Young. Danielle Skinner. Garrett Michael Risco. Dhruv Saxena. Kyle Quintero. Ryan Smith. Jonathan Ritter. Hao Zhu. Chunju Tang. Mukhtar Rashid. Roshan Kumar. Xiao Deng. Ramya Haridis. Trevor Hickey. Ji Li. Sunchi Jen. Jen. 
Larissa Miller. Kurt Cavaggia. Alexander Chen. <laughs> Nicholas Villanueva. <laughs> Nathan Hirsch. and Craig Boys. Thank you. And now, Dr. Chris Rudell, our undergraduate program coordinator will say a few words before the presentation of the undergraduate degrees. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to join my colleagues in congratulating each of our graduates and recognizing the hard work and long hours they put in to earn their place with us tonight. I'd like to also extend a, a warm welcome to each of you tonight as colleagues, as you now are true engineers. I too have reached a small milestone, finishing my first year as the under, EE department's undergraduate coordinator. And this has been a great experience serving all of you uh, undergrads. And it's really been a, a time for reflection for me as, you know, really the last 20 years, uh, I've been focused more on a PhD and post-PhD uh, level. So the last year has forced me to think about undergraduate education and what it means to be an undergraduate EE. Um, I clearly remember now, after reflecting, the reasons why I became an EE undergrad. Like many students, I wandered, wandered around a university campus changing majors no less than three times, from biology to mechanical engineering and then eventually settling in on electrical engineering. I thought about going to medical school, to dental school, to law school, and for a time even thought about being a vet. A few decades back, I felt then, as I do today, that an electrical engineering bachelor's degree offers the most flexibility for someone who is interested in science and math and yet doesn't really know what they want to be when they grow up. And I can tell you today, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Your BS degree in electrical engineering has provided you with skills that can be broadly applied towards many careers. As such, you have an incredible set of opportunities that are sitting right before you right now. And that's reflected in a lot of what the other speakers have already mentioned. Similar to uh, many of my undergraduate classmates, some of you will go to medical school. Some of you will get an MBA. Some of you will be extremely successful uh, lawyers, maybe in patent law. Seated among you are several likely to be successful entrepreneurs that will build companies that are one day traded publicly on Wall Street. And some of you will actually be on Wall Street in large firms commanding funds. Um, and yes, some of you uh, will go on to have very successful careers as practicing electrical engineers who make significant impact in areas of renewable energy to address climate change designing medical devices, perhaps for an aging population, or perhaps building uh, a helping to build a vehicle that sets the first person on the face of Mars. 
That's really, again, the incredible versatility of the degree that you now all have. You are champions for change, and I look forward to seeing uh, all that you will accomplish. With that said, we will now announce the 2018 BS graduates in electrical engineering. Alan Gilmore. Jonathan Hamburg. David Rufin. Emmy Harada. Daniel Predmore. John Paul Aglubat. Akshay Sundaram. Ethan Tarr. Shi Khan Wen. Simone Griffin. Bradley Ang. Christy Trong. Rachel Kamenek. Gerald Erickson. Gerald, congrats. Todd Kazakria. Ervin Tang. Casey Gooch. Max Bright. Joseph Shin. Frank Liu. Yeah. Charmaine Ung. Chihana Sato. Giorgio Minai. June Park. Emraj Sidhu. Nesta Isakovich. Mitchell Orsucci. Walker Casinaduni. Joshua Shackleford. Kevin Lau. Edmund Lai. John Redfield. Edmund Trin. Jeremy Lim. Jomel Abarkar. Yiting Sai. Jamie Santos. (laughs) 
Bassam Halabia. Kevin Caravaggio. Adam Kozira. Peyton Kine. Madeline Schneider. Isaac Wang. Li Wen Zeng. Attila Herrera. Camila Palacio Quintero. Elizabeth Zhang. Sao Lam Yo. Ki Wu. Sheen Hu. Vijay Singh. Ryan Mansfield. <laughs> Kenneth Wilhelm. <laughs> Rebecca Rogers. <laughs> Stephen Huang. Jackie Cheng. Michael Zhang. Ishan Sharma. Khalid Hassoun. Jesse Yang. Jia Chen Zhou. Nikhil Grover. Cecilia Landau. Chloe Lee. William Lee. <laughs> Logan Reed. Christopher Liu. Samuel Shearer. Ching Hao Meng. Jordan Macias. Duke Wang. Eloise Perrochet. Daniel Tran. Aiden Johnson. James Guo. Amanda Tran. Jawan Tan.
Olivia Nelson. Tintin Patananake. <laughs> Tiffany Liu. <laughs> Pierre Laurie. <laughs> Dennis Chivikin. Max Pfeiffer. Lucas Waller. Mitchell Henderson. Kyle Lucci. Nathan Tai. Daniel Wynn. <laughs> Alexander Kashiniak. Michael Walsh. Dexter Crowley. Jing Ji Ju. Kevin Wang. Brian Marr. Jared Nakahara. Caitlin Schaefer. Ya Ying Wang. Bowen Yan. Sheng Li. Zhao Yu Zhao. Yang Ming Ke. John Summers. Pranitha Maganti. Drew Foss. Alagas. Marcus Dykeman. Samuel Johnson. Janssen Wang. Zi Hao Tao. Pinju Chien. Tian Hang Gao. Yu Hao Cheng. Austin Hoursland. Keegan Griffey. Scott Rossoff. Alexander Finisted. <laughs> Sachi Verma. <laughs> Ma
Megan Swanson. Hung Win. Hui Fu. Bao Tran. George Foggin. Jonathan Day. Titus Burnt. Sung Hui Lee. Michael Olson. Yan Wu. Tyler Pirtle. Michael Shoke. Nguyen Lai. Chi Chi Zhang. Ninyang Peng. Fizza Aslam. Yeshiwas Bayu. Kalkidan Zabiraga. Chuno Kamara. Kadir Guhese. Fidel Ekubazgai. Jared Ataki. Yul Rusum. Tomas Waldemichael. Mohammed Sheikh. Israel Zamadim. Ahmed Mualam. <laughs> Yang Mi. And our last graduate, Anissa Dadka. Thank you, all my faculty, for the process. And please join me in congratulating our graduating class of 2018.
Okay, please be seated again, all of you. So the graduates, uh, please stand up to thank all of your faculty mentors and the graduate advising group of this department who have worked tirelessly, helped you along the way and uh, navigate the paths that uh, otherwise was not clear for chair's office or others. So please congratulate or thank you to your faculty and the advising staff. So now I would like to request my faculty colleagues and students to stand up to join me in thanking the families, friends and mentors who have provided invaluable support and resources throughout the academic career of each and every one of your uh, students here. So faculty. For graduates, as we close the ceremony, I have a few words to say. Uh, we at UW are incredibly proud of all the newly minted e-graduates. In fact, we are incredibly proud of all the newly minted UW graduates. We will be your champions for the years to come. So you have ways to reach out to us. And we look forward to a day when you will stand at the podium and share your personal journey to inspire the future generation as Sal did today. And also Jamie Jake shared his uh, part of being a Husky and also being a leader. So thank you everyone uh, here and thank you all for celebrating the significant milestones here with us tonight. Uh, have a wonderful evening and congratulations again to the University of Washington Electrical Engineering Class of 2018. Thank you.